Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Darla and it is another gorgeous, gorgeous evening here in South Florida. I am absolutely loving this evening. It's gosh, around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the evening time and I've got my loom cube all attached to my camera and I am ready to garden the evening away. I, again, like I said, I can't reiterate just how much I love to garden um, in the evening time. Um, it's quiet and it is just, it's a lot cooler um, as we go into our summer months. But um, anyway, what I'm gonna be doing in this video, you guys, is I'm gonna be actually planting up three containers. Now I'm over here on the south side of our property and um, the first container or the first yeah the first two containers are going to be located right here in the landscape. Now what I've decided to do is I've decided to do some uh, a couple of different things over here on the south side. I've decided to go ahead and nestle in some containers into the landscape as opposed to planting it directly into the ground and um, I thought it would just kind of do a couple things. First of all I'm experimenting still with with, uh, the plants that you know will do really well over here because those of you who follow my channel you know that I struggle with this side and last year was the first year that just everything that I that I finally put in over here everything just really really looked um, like on point I mean everything was just oh a lizard just jumped it scared me um, anyway um, Back to the, the, the plants over here, the things that I put in over here last year, last season, they fared just beautifully through um, the whole uh, summer months over here. I was able to keep, you know, water to everything and um, the plants, you know, took the full sun and the heat over here. And so I'm still kind of experimenting with some of the annuals and perennials that I can grow. And I thought, you know, if I get the plants in containers and they don't do well, I can um, I can relocate them a lot quicker and simpler than if I had them in the ground. And so that is what I'm going to be doing um, over here. Again, like I said, I'm going to be, you know, just kind of nestling some things in, um, in, in the landscape in containers. The first container that I'm going to be uh, utilizing is this cute little um, faux, uh, what do you call it? It's a whiskey barrel, faux whiskey barrel. And they're just the little, I think they're just made of like resin or something, very lightweight. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think these were the 14 inch. I bought these probably, I don't know, maybe two years ago. And I've only used them maybe a choice few times. So they're not faded and they are still looking really good. I punched holes in the bottom because as we know, that is a very, very important thing to do in any container basket um, with a very, very few exceptions. But for the most part, making sure that you got adequate draining holes but again I think this is a 14 inch um, container now what I had y'all is I have this cute little um, this cute little uh, riser I guess you would call these it's just a, like a wrought iron it's black and um, I only have one which really surprises me because I'm one of those people that when I go to the store and I buy things much like this I usually buy in twos or in fours so for me to buy one was I thought a little out of character for me and either I you know I, I either only bought one or it's like lost somewhere you know nestled down somewhere in my potting shed and I'm I, I did look but I didn't see it but I'm very disappointed in myself because I really could use two but I'm going to be using at least one the one that I can find and I'm going to be putting it about right in here and I'm going to be nestling it in front of the copper bush and uh, the two copper bushes I have a creamy yellow and white copper bush and then I have the bronze colored leaf copper bush and it sits next to um, an arboricola I'm going to be nestling it right here um, in this little spot and this area right here will get a early morning all afternoon and then it will take just about a maybe an hour and an hour and a half to an hour and a half break because now that my adonidias which are i'm you guys probably can't see it i'll have to show you a little bit but it's located probably just beside the camera but my adonidias are looking just beautiful i am loving them i've got twins over here and they are absolutely gorgeous but with the adonidia growth I am getting a little more shade over here, which is like primo for this side yard to give it a little bit more of that break that it needs over here. So about an hour and a half in that um, late afternoon sun, it will get a little bit of a break. And then as the sun goes over into the west and it starts setting, it'll come in back at an angle. So this will, I would consider this to be a uh, full sun because it's gonna get six plus hours of sun 
of direct sun um, all day long. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just go ahead and take um, one uh, one container at a time, and we'll talk about the recipe of plants that I'm going to put together. Um, let's go ahead and just start right with this pot. Again, full sun. And um, the first one that I'm going to start with is one that I, um, again, it's not a new plant, you know, out there. It's It's been around for a long time, but I've just started utilizing um, this plant. It's called a jasma, jasmine jasmine minima and it is absolutely beautiful um, i found it a couple of years ago at um, a nursery here um, um, a nursery here your farm and garden or or no actually i take that back it was called troy's down in sarasota which is just a, uh, my neighbor actually and so i found them down there just growing in the just the dead of the day in the heat or the sun and they were just i mean they were just like you know bunches and bunches of them and they were so so pretty this particular one and it caught my eye when i bought it um, down there was uh, called summer sunset and i'm going to bring this up a little bit closer to you guys so you can see this actually is, it's a ground cover, but it actually, y'all, it, when it first um, has these new, the, like the new growth and everything, it comes out and it is like a yellow, not yellow, it's an orange cast to the, um, to the plant. So it's got splashes of yellow and it's got, you know, orange on like all the new growth and it just binds all over the place. It's just kind of one of those wonky plants that I just, I love. I'm not a formal gardener, so this is like, perfect in my landscape. I've never grown it as like a ground cover. I've always just put it like in container baskets. But again, like I said, when I was down um, at the nursery, they had um, they had it all just, you know, on the ground, not in, they had it in containers, but they had it all just like in mass. And, you know, all these little containers were all just stacked, you know, like all close to each other. And it just looked like, you know, a huge ground cover. And so I would imagine that they would look absolutely gorgeous if you had like an area like a flower bed you know or on the side you know of the house in the full sun where you just planted just like a, you know bunches and bunches of these they probably just are absolutely spectacular quite a show I would imagine but for right now I don't really have any place to put them in my landscape to plant them like that so I've been just utilizing them in my window boxes and containers and they're looking quite quite beautiful so the, again this is the jasmine mint it is called the summer uh, sunset and it is considered a ground cover and it will spread I mean you can see all the little I call them tentacles these vines it'll just spread and spread and spread um, and of course you know you can clip it back you know to keep it in check but it won't get very tall I'm gonna guess probably in my experience with the with the way I've been growing it it doesn't get much more than like about 12 inches high so beautiful we're going to be utilizing it in this uh, container right here and so that's plant number one and then of course i thought what would go really really beautiful and you guys these are the chrysandra and for those of you who follow my channel you know that i grow quite a few of these in my landscape and in containers i absolutely am loving these chrysandras i've grown them for years and they just put on the most beautiful show because they put on the most gorgeous gorgeous flower and it's just the most beautiful i'm going to bring it up here so you guys can see it is just a beautiful beautiful yellow uh, yellow i don't know why i had the yellow on my mind tonight orange it has got the most beautiful orange spike I got another one coming up here, but they get to be about, you know, six inches, you know, in length. They are absolutely gorgeous. As a matter of fact, let me do this really quick, you guys. I'm going to show you. It is one of my whimsical containers that I planted um, uh, about two, maybe about two months ago. I'm going to show you the Chrysandra that's actually in um, this container. So let me flip the camera around real quick. Okay, so here is the container right here. It's the, the uh, little yellow wheelbarrow that I planted up. Like I said, it's about, about two months now, but check out the uh, chrysandra that are growing in there. Aren't they gorgeous? I mean, they have just, you know, as we, our, our temperatures have started soaring here and the, the humidity has just been so high as well. Those things just put on the most spectacular show. And I, I think, you know, I, I don't really see a whole lot out there um, on, you know, a lot of YouTube channels with the Chrysandra. You know, maybe I'm just missing them, but I think it's just a plant that is just really, um, it's being overlooked, you know, and I am absolutely loving it. It goes with so 
much. It adds such a beautiful tropical um, splash of color to your landscape, window boxes, containers, you know, you name it. But I just thought that that was, um, you know, something that um, you guys really needed to see because that is just an absolutely gorgeous, I'm just gonna walk around here. Um, I've got it paired with many, many other things in there, but that is just stealing the show of this, um, of this uh, wheelbarrow. So anyway, wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and go back over to uh, the container pot. Okay, so back over here to the container that I'm going to be planting up. Um, I'm going to be pairing it with, um, pairing this Jasmine Minima with um, probably maybe three, four of these beautiful little Chrysandras. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm absolutely loving them. And I think that the combination but of the um, orange leaves on this Jasmine and the orange spikes should go really, really beautifully together. So there's the second plant that's going to be going in this container. Container. Then I thought what I would do is I would add a little bit of purple. I am really, as of Christmas time last year, I started really, um, really loving the purple and the red. I paired some beautiful, beautiful red poinsettias with some, what did I have in there? I had poinsettia, red poinsettias. I'm going to try to find the picture. I can't remember what I actually had in there, but I had red poinsettias um, paired with um, some purple. And what were they? I am completely drawing a blank, y'all. I'm going to try to find the picture. They were the hanging baskets that I actually have on um, I had hanging on the front um, of the cabana and I, I I oh it was the gosh petunias petunias isn't that awful I couldn't remember the purple petunias I had seen them growing um, down at our mall here in Sarasota I saw them growing them in the landscape they were they had poinsettias and petunias uh, red poinsettias and purple petunias. They were just all over the place and they were so showy and they just were like spectacular, just really eye-catching. So I came home and I just duplicated that in some hanging baskets and they were gorgeous. And like I said, I'm going to pop uh, the pictures. I should be able to find those because it was just at Christmas time. So it wasn't that long ago, but they were just so absolutely gorgeous. So in sticking kind of with that a little bit uh, with the purple um, and uh, not so much the red, but with the purple and the orange this time, um, I thought I would play at these beautiful lantana. Now you guys, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous purple. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring it up so you guys can see it up close and purple, up uh, purple. Yeah, up close and purple. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's got the most spectacular purple blooms and I am absolutely loving um, that you know that big huge pop of, of color and I think it's going to just really add a lot of, um, of color and texture to the uh, to this basket so in keeping with the theme of purple I'm going to be utilizing these gorgeous purple bloomed lantana now the lantana if I'm not mistaken let me just read the tag because sometimes depending on the variety it, this one says it's going to get to be about 12 to 18 inches high and of course it's going to spread to be anywhere from 24 to 36 inches wide and um, they are extremely extremely heat and sun tolerant this I know through experience so this will definitely get the full sun that it that it needs to keep its blooms um, if you have it in a little bit of a lesser sun you know like just maybe a morning sun or something um, my my guess would be that it probably wouldn't you know bloom as prolifically uh, for you but these these things are just absolutely gorgeous so that is going to be the third plant that I'm going to be planting in this container and I think the colors of the yellow and the orange and the purple are going to just really really pop I love color in the garden. I love the color to just draw your eye. I just, I, I love that when I drive down, you know, in a neighborhood or somewhere where, you know, it's that bold red and those bold um, purples and the, you know, the hot colors that are just so tropical. I love them. I absolutely love them. And they're definitely uh, large in charge in, um, in my landscape. So now the other plant that I, um, I chose is not a plant that I'm very familiar with. I have grown it uh, like one once, once or twice before over the last you know several years and I really do like it and it is actually lavender 
Now it's very, very, um, it's very wonky as you can see. It's got a lot of these um, shoots that just, you know, the, the blooms, they come up on a stalk. And they also have, I'm going to bring this a little closer so you guys can see. It's very bushy down here, okay, very dense. And it puts on these long, long runners with these beautiful purple spikes. And these are like, um, well, just like it says, it's lavender. The, the colors are like a, a lavendery purple. And it's so pretty. And I thought it would be really, really pretty up against the, um, the lantana. And so, um, and they, they smell so good. They've got such a wonderful, wonderful fragrance to them. Gosh, you don't even have to, I, I barely get close to it and I can smell it. But let's read the stats on this guy. It is uh, full sun again, and it says on there that it will get anywhere from three to four foot high, and it will get four to five feet wide. Now, obviously putting it y'all in this 14 inch um, container, it's not gonna get that big. That would be if I were to put it in like the landscape or something where I would have it get to be that big. And my experience, I have never grown them in the landscape myself, but I have definitely grown them in containers and they have gotten, you know, pretty, you know, pretty, they filled out pretty good. They've gotten to be, you know, 24, 36 inches high. Um, and of course these spikes are just absolutely, um, you know, they're, they're, they're the most wonky, gorgeous things. They truly, truly are. And the other thing that I thought would really bring a lot of um, would bring a lot of just like pop to this basket is the texture um, that between the lantana because the lantana leaf has just got a, a very um, like serrated little leaves on there and then you know adding in this um, this very soft and like willowy um, billowy whatever however the, I I'm, sometimes I don't always get my terms right but it's just got a real soft fine texture to um, you know this lavender but I thought it would be really pretty if you can see kind of close up you can see the, the difference of the textures on there and I just thought it would just give a lot of really interesting texture to um, to the basket so there you go all of these plants one two three four different types of plants that I'm going to go ahead and get planted up in this container and then what we'll do is we'll come back we'll take a look at it real quick and then we'll move on to container number two Okay, it's all planted up and it looks absolutely beautiful. And I think it's gonna do really well here. But in the chance that for some reason it's just not getting enough sun, which I don't really think that that's gonna be an issue. Or my, my main concern over here on the south side of the property is that it's getting too much, um, not even really so much sun, but this side of the yard doesn't get that airflow that you would normally get if we didn't have the fence here. If the fence wasn't here, the airflow would be a lot more through here. And I think a lot of the problems that I have over here is due to the fact that it just gets so, so stagnantly hot over here that sometimes the plant it's just really, um, I know it sounds silly, but I just really think that they just can't breathe. But um, anyway, um, I think this plant, this, this container is going to be, you know, good over here. I don't anticipate any problems because these plants are, you know, I do have experience, uh, not as much experience with the, the lavender um, and not as much experience with the jasmine minimum, but enough that when I've grown them before, they did really, really well in the heat. So I'm, ex I'm expecting that this, this container is going to be absolutely um, gorgeous and of course I will keep you guys up to date. So let's go ahead and move on to planter or container I should say number two. Okay now we have the second container that we're going to be working on. Now y'all this container is going to be nestled 
pretty much right where it's at. It's going to be sitting directly underneath of this Adonidia and um, this will get a dappling light all day long. It will from the sun up until about 530 ish, I think around that time when the sun will start setting in the west and then it will go low and it will come in at an angle right about here and it will get a late, late, late day sun, which is perfectly OK, because by that time the sun has lost its intensity and it won't harm these guys at all. And I'm not as concerned. I wouldn't be as concerned as a beetle. I'm not as concerned for the the uh, the Mona Lavender, which is one of the plants that we're to be putting in here but the caladiums um, they you know they say that there are some varieties that can actually take sun I find that when we put them in too much sun here especially in South Florida the leaves actually start fading in in, um, in their color and everything they just fade and they don't look as nice so a little bit of morning sun for the caladiums um, is perfectly fine or a late 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 day for the caladiums is fine but let's just talk really quick about um, the three plants that I'm going to be putting in here actually there's there's three plants but um, actually two um, two of them are uh, just two varieties I should say and of course this is the Mona Lavender now this is also in the Plectranthus family um, the, the video that I just did um, where I showed you guys planting up the um, the 17 inch Chancellor Better Homes and Gardens um, containers uh, under the pool cabana those plants uh, or those containers have the Plectranthus in it they're the variegated plant uh, Plectranthus now this is in the Plectranthus family but this is called a Mona Lavender variety variety and this is just a beautiful beautiful plant I have grown them quite a bit in never in the landscape but a lot of containers and window boxes and they are just absolutely beautiful they get about 12 to 18 inches high mine usually get all of 18 inches high I've had this one for a little while in its original nursery can and it is all of 18 inches high right now and it is looking absolutely gorgeous they do really well in a part sun so you could have them in a very um, you know like in an early uh, early day sun I would definitely protect them from a late you know or, or a midday sun and um, you know late 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 afternoon they're gonna be perfectly fine but um, you know I don't know other climates may be a little different but here in South Florida um, you know I tend to protect things that say part Sun um, I protect them from that midday Sun because between like you know 10 and 2 um, actually I should say between 10 and 4 our Sun is just like it is like really intense but you guys these Mona lavender they put on the most gorgeous gorgeous bloom spikes the lavender bloom spikes and they just like for me they my experience is with them that they just continuously bloom and <clears throat> excuse me I'm choking myself what I normally do is once their bloom is spent you don't necessarily have to but I like to clean the the, the spikes up a little bit and I just kind of deadhead them I pinch them off with my finger I get a little scissor and I just kind of clean them up a little bit and thereby it just produces more and more blooms so don't have to be deadheaded, but it's, I would I would advise it because it's going to definitely uh, promote more blooms. And let's face it, y'all, the, the lavender blooms on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. So Mona Lavender, we're going to be nestling this guy down in the back here of this container. And then I'm going to use two of these caladiums right here. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, when I saw these in the nursery, they actually had a name. This caladium is called the Frida Hempel Caladium. And they're just beautiful. I love caladiums. You just can't go wrong with caladiums, period. Um, they are a really deep red center, a huge center, actually, with a dark rim green all the way around the, the beautiful roughly edges. Now, it does say on here that the um, the average height of this is about 12 to 24 inches high. I'm going to go out and venture a guess to say, with my experience with the caladiums, being that it's going to get about 24 inches high, these are going to be considered to be the fancy leaf. You have two like type varieties. You've got a lance leaf, which is a little bit of the lower growing. Those are going to get probably more of like maybe the 12 to 18, um, whereas the fancy leaf is going to get closer to the 24 inch. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to venture a guess, since it does say that on the tag, that this is probably the fancy leaf. So anyway, there you go. The Frida. Hempel is that what that said Frida Hempel we're going to be using two so a very very simple little basket very inexpensive because you're only using um, three actually plants in that container and it should just go through the whole entire summer under a dappling light which again it just means it's going to get speckly sun 
all day long until the late, late 530 afternoon sun at an angle where it will be uh, less intense. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy planted up really quick. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the third basket, which is going to be a full shade basket. Okay, y'all, here is the second basket. Just really quickly, I wanted to bring it in for a close-up shot. Isn't that just the sweetest thing? Something just so simple just can make just such a major impact in the landscape. But look at how beautiful those, um, those spikes, those uh, purple spikes are. I just think they are so pretty and they look so gorgeous up against that bright red foliage of the caladium. So again, a very dappling light all day long for this particular container. So let's go ahead and get started on that third full shade container. Okay, you guys, I have to apologize. Clearly it is the next day. I was out here filming this last container and I thought I hit the record button and clearly I didn't. When I went to go look for that footage, it was just simply not there. So I do apologize for that. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up today with this last and final container. This is the full shade container. And I'm really sorry that you guys were not able to see me plant this up, but we can do a real quick recap on, um, well, it's a recap that you never saw, but we can go ahead and go over this again so you guys can see exactly what I put in this full shade container. To start with in the back here, I went ahead and I put in a Sansevieria. Now this is also known as a snake plant or a mother-in-law's tongue and um, is actually a very um, a very cool, um, cool plant. And just very, very quickly, a, a, a cute little story. 35 years ago when Robin and I bought this house, um, in the very back corner with our very first deck that we put in, um, well before before um, the cabana was even thought of, um, there was a chain link fence that came around uh, the back half here. And before we could put that, that wood deck in, we had just like, you know, just a bunch of this, um, you know, uh, snake plant just growing wild back here. And I mean, it was just like in clumps all over in the corner back here. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, that is just such awful looking plant, whatever it is, or weed. And I just pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and just tried to get that up. And it was just, it had naturalized, I guess for just so long that it was just, I was having a terrible time getting rid of it. Well, in hindsight, 35 years fast forward, now I'm paying $20 for it at the, at the nurseries. And I just think that's kind of funny, so I wanted to share that with you. But these snake plants, um, they I don't necessarily know that I would put them anywhere in my landscape unless I actually had a specific need, maybe in a succulent garden or something like that, um, where they would actually maybe look good. I don't know. Uh, maybe some of you guys have some really cool things out in your landscape that you've done with them. But I think that they make really excellent container plants because of their structure. And they just bring such, um, I don't know, they just bring such a different look to containers. And so that is what I have done. I have just went ahead and I uh, stuck this, this snake plant right in the back, bringing a lot of you know dimension and texture to this container. And then what I've done is, and of course, just to, just to you know go back a little bit, this um, this snake plant will take anything from full shade to full sun. It's almost like you can't kill it. They are very, very resilient plants. So again, um, th this guy keeps sticking me in the face. I got little pointy tips here, but um, they're not necessarily really sharp or anything like that. But anyway, we've got the snake plant um, all planted in here and I have paired with it um, a golden pothos. And these pothos, y'all, you know, living here in South Florida, I can grow them outdoors in our landscape pretty much year round. And usually what I do if we have a, like a cooler winter, um, I just go and I just kind of trim them in a little bit, but they generally just, um, they grow again in very low light conditions. Um, I would never put them in a sun, uh, you know, a dappling, a dappling light they could probably take, but they could not take some, not probably, they, they could take a dappling light, but nothing by the way of the full sun, at least here in my climate. But they're absolutely beautiful. And they, they, the other thing that I like so well about the pothos is that they pair so well with so many things. 
and they are trailing. As you can see, I've got a nice long trailer already coming out the side of this basket. And then on the opposite side, we have a fern. Now it was funny because when I took this guy out of its container to put him in, it had on there Jester's fern. And I thought, what the heck is a Jester's fern? I'd never heard of that before. So I looked it up and quite simply y'all, it just, it's a Boston fern is what it is. Another name for it is just, I guess, Jester's fern. So we have a Jester's fern or a Boston fern over here. And again, full sun, these guys will get, um, you know, very, very large. They get, um, I don't really know the exact dimensions, but they fill out quite beautifully. Their um, their spears, if you will, I know they can get you know probably you know good you know 12, 18 inches tall, and they they probably go a good 12 to 18 inches wide, or possibly even bigger the larger the container that you have. I've seen people have them on their front porches in very large containers, and I mean they are just they're huge. They're absolutely huge. Um, they're moderate growers here um, in my climate, but they just they I thought the texture of the the fern leaf up against this um, the sansa area I thought would look really really nice and then of course in the center we have a caladium I originally wasn't going to do that but what I, I had so much green going on here and I thought you know I need to break that monotony up a little bit and something to kind of draw your eye because we're in the back of the cabana where it will not get any direct sun at all as a matter of fact when that sun starts sinking low in the west even when it comes in an angle, <clears throat> excuse me, even when it comes in at, <clears throat> excuse me, at the sun comes in at an angle, it still won't be uh, sunny up here at all. It'll get a very, very bright light, but no, no direct sun at all. So um, I thought the caladiums would be a perfect choice to kind of add in there for um, just some eye-catching, um, you know, to draw some visual to this container and very eye-catching with its very, very pretty green margins all around and then the dark red center. So there you go. This is a very beautiful shade container here. And to recap, we have the first container that we did over on the south side of the property, a full sun container, and that one contained the um, purple lantana it had a lavender with the spiky lavender flowers on it. We had chrysandra all put um, in there, uh, you know, all dappled around there. I think I ended up putting four of them in there. And then um, the uh, jasmine minima summer sunset on the front. That was the first full sun container. The second container is a uh, dappling light all day long until the late, late afternoon. Um, and by the time that sun, you know, does come in at an angle, it is so, so low, the sun is so, so low that it's, you know, it's lost its intensity. But that container, um, it, it has a Plectranthus Mona Lavender in it with the long spiky flowers. And then it had also in front of it, uh, two of the Caladiums. And I believe those were, they looked a lot like these right here where they have the red centers and the green margins. And again, that one's a dappling white. And then for the third and final container, as you can see here, we have the shade container once again with the uh, snake plant or Sansevieria. We have the Jester's Fern or Boston Fern. We have the Golden Pothos and of course, again, then the Caladium. So you guys, I hope that you enjoyed uh, the, the contents of this video, just demonstrating, you know, some of the flowers that you can use in, you know, very, very different conditions. And I'm gonna be listing all of these flowers in the description of this video, if you're interested at all in any of these recipes. And again, if you are enjoying this content, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so by clicking that subscribe button. And we'll plan on seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.